Winter championships begin already. Highlights are next on High School Sports Scene. Hi, and welcome to this edition of High School Sports Scene. I'm Ryan Plano. The first county titles of the winter season have been awarded. Our first champs earn their titles in track and field. The 2012 Baltimore County Indoor Track Championships, held at the 5th Regiment Armory, had a familiar feel. As for the third consecutive year, Hereford's boys and girls teams earned the title of county champs. The Bulls' victories were powered by their dominance in the middle and long distances and strong showings in the field events. On the boys' side, Hereford junior John Luckin ran to victories in both the 1600 and 3200 meter runs. Matt Leonard used a strong kick in the last 100 meters to give the Bulls a win in the 800. Graham Hensley added a win in the shot put for Hereford. And the Bulls took the top three spots in the pole vault. The Bulls' success was mirrored on the girls' side. Senior Emily Vandewater and sophomore Sarah Ashwood finished 1-2 in both the 800 and 1600 meter runs. Teammate Sarah Carter was first in the 3200 where the Bulls took three of the top five spots. The Bulls' girls added wins in the 4x400 and 4x800 meter relays. Hereford also took the top two spots in the pole vault. Franklin took second in both the boys and girls competitions. Other strong individual performers included Western Tech sophomore Sharon Dorsey with wins in the girls 300 and 500 meter dashes and Milford Mill senior Raquel Moses who won the 55 meter hurdles and anchored the Millers winning 4x200 meter relay squad. Congratulations to all the competitors. Cheerleaders from around the county gathered at CCBC's Dundalk campus for the Winter Cheerleading Championship. On a very unwinter-like Saturday, varsity cheerleading squads from around the county gathered at CCBC Dundalk for the Winter Cheerleading Championship. For over two and a half hours, the teams entertained a packed house with routines filled with cheers, dance, and gymnastics. At stake were seven spots in the regional competition with a chance to advance to the state championship. While the cheerleaders awaited the final results, the coaches honored one of their own as the coach of the year, longtime Delaney coach Kim Betancourt. When the points were tallied, the final results were announced. In seventh place, the Taps go. Sixth place. In third place, 
Franklin Indians. In second place, the Hereford Bulls. Winter Baltimore County 2012. Our champions are the Eastern Mavericks. Congratulations to all the teams for putting on a great show. The two top-ranked boys basketball teams in the metro area met to see who was number one. The stage was set for two powerhouse teams, the number one ranked Dunbar Poets versus the second ranked Milford Mill Millers. Game got out to a quick start, but they steal from Control Myers and he knows how to finish. But the poets would not be outdone. Evan Singletary drive, steps back, and drains a three. Both teams kept coming at each other, one above the rim, and the other from long distance. Nice bounce pass from Kenny Solomon, and Tyson Smith is there for the easy two. Dunbar came right back. Gavin Pettiford penetrated with a nice dish to Aaron Parham with a strong finish. Kyle Thomas takes the shot, and Chase Kamir is there for the putback. Both teams went back and forth with a halftime score, tied up at 29. The second half was no different, with Evans dialing up from long distance. Three ball, corner pocket! Milford came right back with a nice move from Kyle Thomas for the easy finish. With time running down, Roger Harrison makes a clutch shot. Dunbar is forced to foul. Missed foul shots could have sealed the game for the Millers. Dunbar still had a chance. A hard and tough fought game, and the Millers came up big for the win. One of the key players for the Millers is point guard Chase Cormier. He is also this month's outstanding male student athlete. Here's Emma McDonald with the story. Chase Cormier is a senior point guard at Milford Mill Academy on the west side of Baltimore County. Moving up to the varsity basketball team as a sophomore was a big adjustment for Chase. It was difficult when I moved up to varsity because everybody was bigger, stronger, faster than everybody on JV. My first impression was he's a very competitive young man. Uh, he worked very hard and he seemed to really, really love to play basketball. For the past two years, Chase was a reserve player for the two-time state champion Millers. This year, he has moved into the starting point guard position. Our past two state championships, he sort of played that role where he came in, gave us a spark off of the bench. We had some pretty good players in front of him uh, for him to learn from. So he took the opportunity to learn and has developed, and now it's his turn. It was a little, it was a little uh, painful watching because you're so used to playing all the time. But I had to be real patient with my turn. Wait for, yeah, basically wait for them to graduate. And that was my turn. As the starting point guard, Chase has embraced his role as leader of the team on and off the court. 
Now that I start games, you have to start on a good note. And last year, coming off the bench, it was easier. All you do is come to the game and do what you had to do, and then you come back out. But now as a starter, you play major minutes, and then clutch possessions. Chase stepped up big. It's a big role, but he did step up, and I think he's filling the shoes. He's doing a lot of distributing. He's not being selfish. He's really playing good basketball, and he's leading us. Chase has improved many aspects of his game since his first year on varsity. We call it basketball IQ. It has really improved his, how he sees the game when he's playing the game, and then how he approaches the game off the court has really improved. It's much more of a, a business-like sort of approach to the game than kind of when you come into high school, and it's sort of still just a game. His unselfishness on the court has improved the team's ability to work together and has helped them achieve success. We have a lot of scores, and now we have a point guard that can really just pass the ball. So that's really helping us, helping us out a lot. He's not worried about scoring. He's just worrying about getting 15 assists or 20 assists. So that's real good coming from a point guard. With a young man who enjoys distributing the ball and getting his teammates involved and sort of just being a facilitator is rare and he possesses that trait and that's what makes him a good player and that's what makes him a good fit, the perfect fit for our team. Chase has taken his role as point guard further than just basketball by supporting his team in school as well. He's a good person, like he's there for you whenever you need him. Also is a good basketball player and good in the classroom. Off the court we call each other brothers, we always do everything together. We sit with each other at lunches, we do our work together in study hall, we go out together all the time. He sort of embodies everything we want a young man to be, and so when the other players see him in a leadership role, they want to take on those same qualities. Because of Chase's intelligence and basketball skill, Coach Holly sees more than just playing basketball for Chase in the future. I see him as a coach. Um, he understands the game well. He sort of approaches it cerebrally, so I think that would be a good fit for him in the future. We'd like to wish Chase the best of luck in his future academic and athletic career. For High School Sports Scene, this is Emma McDonald. Congratulations to Chase. To honor his selection as this month's Outstanding Male Student Athlete, he will receive an award provided by Allegram Incorporated in Timonium. Coming up next is Randy Dace with Coach's Corner. We'll be back in two weeks with another edition of High School Sports Scene. We hope you'll join us then. Until then, I'm Ryan Plano. Thanks for watching. Hi, I'm Randy Dace and welcome to Coach's Corner. My guests today are Mike Wisner, the varsity wrestling coach at Sparrows Point High School, and one of his top wrestlers, Shane Hammer. Gentlemen, welcome to high school sports scene. And first of all, congratulations, Coach. Uh, you guys are having a banner year so far, and I know it's early to say that, but uh, pretty good team you got this year? Absolutely. This is the best team. This is my seventh year as a head coach. This is our best team by far, my, my seven years. And Shane, you've been wrestling for uh, the four Pointers yeah, for, four for the last now. four years, yep. right? Yep. And so is this, is this the year? Yeah, it's, uh, it's all or nothing pretty much, senior year, you know. It's either you make it or you don't, you know, so. Yeah, I was uh, looking at the newspaper this morning. I see that uh, you were ranked at one time all the way up 12th in the metropolitan area, which uh, I think is outstanding. And, you know, you've dropped down a little bit to honorable mention, but you, you had to run against two big schools, didn't you? Back to back. And Owen, go back ahead. Back to back. Uh, Owings Mills, which was ranked, I think, at the time sixth, and then Hereford, which is always a, a county power. Those two schools have been the, the best in the county in the last 10 years. And our, our third loss in a tournament was to Mount Vernon, which is one of the powerhouses mm -hmm. down in Virginia. And that's, that's outstanding because you are a 1A school, and you want to explain to our viewers what we mean by a 1A school. Well, in a 1A school, we're the, we're the smallest school in the county besides Carver. Um, so we're only dealing with 800 kids, whereas Perry Hall, some of those other schools are pulling from 2,400 kids. So we're at an extinct disadvantage, but, and we, we just started the rec program last year. So not only the fact that we don't have a lot of kids to pull from, we don't have these kids coming in with any kind of experience. We really have, we're really fighting against a lot of things, but we just... We find a way. That's our team motto, find a way. Now, uh, Shane, you wrestled against Owens Mills and Hereford. And mm -hmm. tell us about uh, your experience against those two powerhouses. Well, I mean, I mean, of course, for the four years, they've always been a powerhouse, like Wizard said. It's, you know, they always have, like, good kids on their team, you know, stank, uh, state rankings. And, you know, uh, last you know, 152 match against Demetrius Johnson, you know, he won states last year. So it's always going in with a dog fight, you know, 
if I would beat him, it would put the rankings uh, above him, obviously. You know, it's just, it's always a tough match with those schools. And what was the score with him this year? It was 6-4. Uh, to four. You know, he beat me by two points, you know. That's outstanding. Yeah. Now, Coach, you want to tell us, when we talk about a match, tell us what a match consists of uh, with one wrestler as far as the times and limits, well, things like that. Uh, uh, wrestling match is three periods, two minutes long. Uh, then it goes to various overtimes. You wrestle the entire match, it's eight and a half minutes long, which people s s don't think that sounds like a lot. But if you can wrestle a six-minute match, like, it's one of the things I tell my wrestlers. If you can wrestle a six-minute match, you can do anything. And then in the course of the match, you can s you score various points um, takedowns, near falls, th those kind of things. So a match like Sh in Shane's match, six to four, is a very low scoring match. You're talking about a couple of points scored over the course of six minutes. Um, it was a really tremendous effort um, against, a, against a defending state champ. Uh, Coach, what's make, what makes a good wrestler to you? What are you One, looking for? Heart. 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 Wrestling's a sport where, you know, I injuries happen. Um, you have to be disciplined and you have to have heart. Um, because your first your first match is always is not with your opponent it's with the scale you you, you got to make weight some <laughs> people can handle that some people can't handle that um, but you have to have discipline you have to have heart you have to have be the willing to to fight harder than than the other guys fighting mm -hmm. and Shane I always look at wrestling as a sport that's you know I, I have great respect for it but I would not want to do it because you <laughs> spend your time in a small hot yeah. room and you're running and running and trying to lose weight mm. why do you love the sport it always pays off in the end, you know, when you get done the season, you can always look at yourself and be like, I, you know, I did everything I could, you know, and everything, the accomplishments are always awesome, you know. I placed second in this tournament, you know. Of course, I had to lose five pounds for the tournament, but it was always worth the hard work, you know. It, it always pays off at the end. You say losing five pounds. Can you tell me how to do that? Because I've been looking at losing <laughs> weight. I mean, you can either do it the hard way, you know, the, the day of the match, you're on a uh -huh. bike, you know, just, you know, sweat clothes, just getting everything right. out. Or, you know, you, you small in your, your meals, like instead of eating, you know, five double cheeseburgers, you cut down, you know, maybe a sandwich <laughs> and a banana and the water okay. and just, you know, portion down in your meals, you know, it just it always pays off. Now, Coach, when you talk about wrestling, I, can, I sort of feel the passion in your voice. And uh, I guess we better mention you're a product of the Baltimore County Public School System, aren't you? Absolutely. An Eastern Tech grad. And tell us the sports you played at Eastern Tech. At Eastern Tech, I did football for four years, wrestled for four years, and I did lacrosse for for four years. And what uh, weight did you wrestle? <laughs> I wrestled 189. Did you? My, uh, my senior year, yeah. Okay. And uh, then you went on to Towson University, on to Towson, and now you yeah. came back, and you're a social studies teacher at Sparrow's Point. And uh, I, I, it looks like to me you, you love your, your job. Absolutely. I'm in a great environment. Um, I've been at Sparrow's Point for, for mm -hmm. 10 years, like you said. I've been coaching uh, the whole time that I, I've been there. Uh, it's a great environment. We have a great principal, Mr. Sierra Croach. He's been there for the, my entire time. Um, great athletic director, just a great support staff that we have. There's a great group of people, and I don't, I don't, I don't know anything else. I hear stories all the time about. <laughs> to, we, we've had a lot of trans, teachers transfer in over the years, and right. I hear stories from there, and it, it's just foreign to me because Sparrow's Point's all I know. Right now, it, it's uh, also great to have a, I think, a product who, who went to Baltimore County, graduated, and you, you played for some pretty. Well-known coaches at Eastern Tech. You want to share some of those coaches' names with us? I, could, I, I wrestled for Mr. Gass. Mr. Gass just got inducted into the Wrestling Hall of Fame. Um, I also coached. I also played for Mr. Salters, who was at who was at Eastern Tech when it opened in, mm -hmm. I believe, '72. Jim Salters was there, and he retired after my sophomore year. Um, Coach Arminio came in um, and really turned the Eastern Tech program around. They went on to win a state championship under him. And I also played lacrosse for. Chad Roeder and, and Larry Johnson, who were well known in the lacrosse community. And Shane, uh, you're a senior. Yep. And uh, let me ask you this question because Coach has a lot of experience from participating and, and, and now coaching. Mm -hmm. But when did you first start wrestling? Um, freshman year. I just, <laughs> I don't know why. I just, you know, I heard about wrestling. I didn't know much about it. I didn't wrestle any uh, junior league or anything before. Mm -hmm. I just heard about it and decided maybe I'll try out, you know, something to do in the winter. What was the most difficult thing for you to uh, learn? Cutting weight, I would say. <laughs> I mean, it, you know, it, it's always been a killer, you know, trying to get down to what you got to be, you know. It's now, how about all the moves, okay? Is that, is that difficult to pick up or not? Um, if you drill it enough, you, you'll eventually get it to where it's like muscle memory. You know, if you're in there, you can usually tell what you can and can't do, you know, as far as setting everything up. Shane, what's a typical uh, wrestling practice like? Oh, it's uh, usually we're going to warm up, we'll stretch out, of course, you know, with a run or... Um, We'll start drilling all our techniques and stuff. 
And then after all that, we'll go into Shark Beat, which is, you know, like six or nine minutes of just live wrestling to wow. one guy's in the middle and everybody's, just, you know, going in and trying to take him down or, you know. Uh -huh. Yeah. Well, let me ask you this one. I always ask every wrestler this question. You're out in the mat, the gym's full of people, everybody's yelling and screaming, and, you know, coaches there are yelling, shoot it, shoot it, shoot it, you know. Right? Do you ever hear anything from the coach or from anybody in that stands, or are you just zoned in on your opponent? Um... During the course of the period, for the two minutes, it's usually like I'm just focused on the, uh, the opponent. Mm -hmm. But when it, we get to like a like a second break when, in between the periods, I always look at my coaches and you know they'll tell me like what I need to do like to get through this period, you know, to put me on top. I guess you know give me more points than the other guy. What's the toughest period? The, um, the third, definitely the third period. Okay. You know, I usually make it there a lot. You know, it's mm -hmm. always six minute matches with me. I don't know why. It's just what I've been doing this year. Um, but yeah, like he said, it's all heart in third period. You know, it's you know who who really wants it more. You know. Now, coach, he's told me you have a you know pretty good squad this year. Uh, what part of the, of your lineup is the strongest? Our middleweights is, is very senior dominated, um, from from 45 on up. 45 to um, that that middle part. We we lost a couple upper weights to, to graduation. That the middle part is is where we really get into the chunk of our lineup. We against Hereford a couple weeks ago. We started off in the middle of our lineup, and we built a 17-0 lead on Hereford because we were able to start with, start with our strength. So, once you get into that area of our lineup, I feel we can do um, we, we can do some damage. It's just the, the 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 front end and the back end need to, to hold, hold their own. What's Shane's strength as a wrestler? Shane's strength is his heart. I was surprised to hear him say that the third period's the most difficult because nine out of ten times Shane's going to be in better condition than his opponent. Once it gets into, if it's a th close match third period, I have my, my, my faith in Shane. First period, the other guy is, and Shane have earned equal, you know, as right. far as stamina, but get a third period, Shane's going to out outlast the kid. So coach, we had the counties coming up, latter part of February, right? We have a regional tournament. Last year, you guys did well in the region. Yeah, second in the region. Second to Owings Mills, which is like second to the king yeah. of wrestling. <laughs> so they won state title after state title. And then uh, from the region this year, you think you can qualify some kids for the states too? We're going to hope to improve on the mark. We had f we had five kids make it qualify for the states last year. We we hope to do better than that. Um, we had um, we we're, we're close to having a, a kid place last year. We, we hope to have a couple kids actually place in the state tournament this year. Mm -hmm. That's that, that's our goal for the state tournament. Outstanding. Well, listen, coach. Congratulations on building a great program. And I hope to see you in that classroom and coaching three sports for many years to come. And Shane, it's been a pleasure meeting you. And I wish you good luck in the counties, in the regionals. And hopefully we'll see you down at the Coalfield House wrestling in the States. College Park. Very good. For High School Sports Scene, I'm Randy Dace. Thanks for watching. See you next time.